Welcome everyone. Hi, it's Dr. Elena Michaels. I'm gonna do a card reading for you and a guided meditation. And so we are going to begin. I'm going to talk for just a few minutes about something that came up uh, this morning actually with um, someone that I'm working with that sees me professionally. Um, sometimes they're clients, sometimes they're patients. And this was a person who's both. That means I help them with their health issues and also with any um, life situations, any solution-focused psychotherapy, any coaching. So those are the clients. And then if they're patients, it's more medical with blood tests and supplements and test results. So sometimes they're both. So this came up with someone today. And I think it's an important issue to discuss. And that is making sure you're around people who are safe. Now, when I say that, you know, we're thinking, oh, danger, you know, a person who might hurt you. I'm talking about emotionally safe. One of the things that happens is if you think about your childhood and you think about who wasn't safe for you or the relationships you had where people betrayed you, took advantage of you or betrayed your trust or manipulated you and convinced you to be vulnerable with them or like they were your best friend and they wanted you to open up to them and then they stabbed you emotionally. That's what I'm talking about. Could be parents, could be siblings, could be grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, whatever, friends. But those kind of patterns tend to repeat. So in your life now, as an adult, which most of you are, it's important to be aware of who's safe and who's not. Now, the thing about that is people who are not safe for you, who will come out of left field and kind of stab you emotionally or betray you or um, take advantage of your vulnerability, they're usually not evolved enough for you to have a conversation with them about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So rather than have a conversation with them about it, sometimes it's best to just distance yourself a little bit and they may never even know you're distancing yourself, but don't let yourself be as vulnerable with them. And it's important as a sensitive person and empathic person, which you are if you're watching this and listening to this, because you, you wouldn't be gravitating here if you weren't that way. So it's, it's very important to protect your energetic frequency and to protect your energetic field. And you don't have to make a big drama about it. You just retreat a little bit emotionally. You can still see them socially, you can still see them professionally, you can still be kind, you can still be warm, you can still say hello, but don't let yourself be vulnerable with them because they aren't safe. And it's very important to find out in your life who's safe and who's not. And to be able to monitor your energy so that you do not allow yourself to get too deep with people who are not safe. So with that, that's something that came up with someone I was working with this morning. And she was, you know, very hurt by something that happened with someone close to her who she had been very vulnerable with and felt very safe with, but the person just kind of came out of left field and attacked her for no reason. And of course there's two sides to every story, but some people are just more consciously aware than others are. And for those who are more consciously aware, you don't have to get into a dialogue or try and convince the other person or enlighten the other person. Everybody's at the level they're at and everyone is doing the best they can. So your job is to protect your own precious energy, your own precious frequency, and the other person may not even know that you're withdrawing a little bit because you don't have to make a big drama out of it. You just pull back a little bit. You don't share as much. You're not as available. You're not as open. You're not as raw. You're not as vulnerable. It's very interesting because a lot of these people are very manipulative. You know, they, they manipulate you to get you to feel safe with them. They manipulate you to share your innermost, you know, secrets and your psychological blueprint with them. And then they just do something way out of left field. And often they get into like a blaming stance. They blame you. They use a lot of you this, you that. They use a lot of you words, which um, can be very shaming. 
because when someone is saying you blankly blank 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 and you made me feel blank 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 and you did blank 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 you know it's like whoa it's it's um it can be very attacking very blaming and very shaming and unnecessarily so most of the time these people because they're not quite as aware as you might be are actually projecting their own crap on you so maybe they're upset about something uh, maybe they themselves are the thing that they're blaming you for whether it's you know I don't know maybe they're blaming you for I don't know what whatever but if you look closely, you'll probably see that that's something, that's a quality they have that they don't like. So they're projecting it onto you and then they can blame you for that quality instead of taking responsibility for it in themselves. Does that make sense? I know this is kind of interesting little dynamic stuff, but think about it and I think you'll get it. If you wanna to listen to this again, listen to it again. But remember, if you're clean and you know you're clean energetically, and you know you're authentic, and you know that you are um, coming from integrity and honest, and that you're not having blind spots about yourself. And if someone is saying things to you that don't quite feel right, they feel like they're out of left field, think if it's that person's own quality that they are projecting onto you because it's an unpleasant, undesirable quality, and then they get to attack you for it. People do this with someone they're very close to. They do it with close friends and close family. So just be aware of that and distance yourself if you find that you have people like that in your circle, whether it's your family, your coworkers, your partner, even your friends, just, you know, retract and protect your energy. Okay, that's a very important point because you who are watching this are sensitive beings. Okay, you might look strong, you might look powerful, but you're very sensitive and you have to protect your energy. It's like one of the most important lessons you have to learn in this lifetime is how to protect your precious energy and protect your precious frequency. Okay, so with that, we're gonna get into some cards. All right, and uh, this one may not be as long as usual because I'm going right into the cards right away. And so we're going to start with, actually, I opened this by mistake. So maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe this is the deck I'm supposed to start with. I usually don't start with this deck. But you'll see at the beginning, I talk rather rapidly. And then as I start moving into a trance with the cards, my energy changes and I go into more of a slower pace with my voice. But I'm going to shuffle these. These are the angel cards. We're going to start with that. Don't know why, but it came up, so we're gonna go with the flow. I follow directions, you know, from wherever. Also, you know that if my eyes water and I start yawning, it's not because I'm tired or bored, it's because I am releasing energy so I can best channel for you. Now, I have a fan on today, it's really warm in here. So, I hope you can hear me okay. Already I'm starting to heat up. Okay, cutting the cards once, and the card on top is this one. This says a change in direction. Well, we are coming into a full moon shortly. It's going to happen. And actually on July 3rd, it's going to happen. So we're not quite there yet. But maybe you feel like you've got a change in direction coming. Maybe you're moving to a new location. Maybe you're changing careers. Maybe you feel like your career is shifting. Maybe your relationships are shifting. Maybe your relationships are shifting because of what I just said and what I just brought up. Possibly that's the case. Let's see what this card says in detail, okay? All right. Changing direction. The changes you're experiencing are divinely directed by your newborn willingness to open your heart to love and our guidance. This is from the angel speaking to you. You are protected now and in the future, so follow your path to the happy outcomes you desire. This card signifies, look at the card. See, there's like a stork and the birth of something. See that? Angelic presence 
there's wisdom there. It's almost like there's notes and directions, and then there's a newborn. This doesn't necessarily mean a newborn baby. It means the birth of an idea or a change in direction. This card signifies that you've had a change of heart that has altered the direction of your life in a positive way. Your old ways of living no longer interest you, and you find yourself avoiding friends and pastimes that previously attracted you. Don't you think this is ironic? You can't write this stuff. It's just what I was talking about, that you have to kind of pull back from people that aren't safe. And here it says, friends and pastimes that previously attracted you. You desire a lifestyle and a career that will better fit your interests and passions. The angels are guiding you through this time of transition. The law of attraction ensures that you'll manifest wonderful new opportunities and relationships. Right? Isn't that what I was saying? Sometimes you have to change your relationships if you feel that the people around you aren't safe. Whether you're, they're your family or not, you can still be polite, warm, civil, and professional in the workplace, in your family, in your relationships, in your friendships, but you then have something that clicked in your head that lets you know, mm, don't go too far with this person, okay? So, new opportunities and relationships. Here's some additional meanings. You're starting a new phase of your life. The birth of a new project is in the works. Pregnancy, birth, or the adoption of a child is possible. It could be a real child, could be the birth of an idea, a birth of a new project. A new element in your life is a blessing, even if it doesn't make sense right now. Keep your eyes and ears open. Now remember, at the beginning, I always tell you, but I forgot to this time, think of a question that you might have that you'll get some clarity and revelation from, from the cards, okay? So think of that right now. And I'm going to move into um, a different deck. I lay them out on a table here so I can see where we're going. You know, I'm just going to go straight for the angel cards. I don't know why. It's, that's what I am guided to do this time. And I just do what I'm told if you get my drift. When it comes from angelic source anyway, and divine source and God source, that's when I do what I'm told. I don't do what I'm told when people tell me what to do if it doesn't make sense to me. All right. Next card is this one counselor. Well, let's see what's going on there. You know, this came up too. It's the back of the deck. I just noticed it. Courage. I'm going to do both of these. Okay. Counselor is Archangel Azrael. Okay. Isn't she gorgeous? Look, see, she has divine guidance right above her. Okay. And then courage is Archangel Ariel pretty cool. I used to wear my hair like that when it was blonde. I wore a long blonde braid. Okay, well, you need courage if we're going to change direction. <clears throat> and if directions are changing, you need courage. So let's look at counselor first, because that's the first one that came up. You're a natural counselor, and many people benefit from your guidance and reassurance. Your life purpose involves counseling people in ways that uplift, motivate, comfort, heal, and inspire. This doesn't mean you have to be a professional counselor. This means just who you are. That's who you are. You're a true spiritual counselor and people find you to be a trustworthy confidant. Expand your counseling work to the next level because you're about to help greater numbers of people. Call upon me for guidance and support. That's Azra L saying, call upon her, okay? Working with Archangel Azrael. Azrael's name means whom God helps. And Azrael helps those who are helpers, particularly those interested in helping counselors who work with the grieving or the dying. Wow, that's pretty heavy. Okay. Ask Azrael to guide your words and actions during counseling sessions, and you'll get the help to remain patient and compassionate. Also, Azrael can help you enter the counseling profession and guide you towards schooling, internships, and a wonderful counseling practice. Well, you, don't, you can be a counselor without getting a degree. You can be a counselor by being a good friend. You can be a counselor by, you know, you can be a drug addiction counselor, you can be a coach, 
You can be a sports coach, which is kind of a counselor. You could be a uh, music teacher, which is kind of a counselor. A counselor is someone who guides someone else and helps someone else with their expertise and knowledge and experience and education. So, and each of you is your own counselor. Your higher self is your counselor too. The next one is courage. That's Archangel Oz, uh, Ariel. That's the one with the long blonde braid. Okay, let's look up about her. Courage. If you're gonna make changes, you need, you need courage. Right, Luna? That's right. So Archangel Ariel says, be courageous and stand up for your beliefs. In this situation, you need to act upon your convictions, even if others disagree. You know, if you're trying to talk to somebody about how they have betrayed you, don't waste your time because they're going to disagree with you and blame you. Just don't even go there. Just move on. Just know in your head what happened and move on. I'm protecting you from harm and guiding you to be a loving warrior of light. <clears throat> Throat clearing is another thing that happens when I start uh, doing this and clearing myself. As you stand up for your beliefs, you're a role model for others. This is an important form of spiritual teaching in which your example gives others courage to stand up for their own principles. Working with Archangel Ariel. Ariel's name means Lioness of God, and she reflects these qualities, including bravery, courage, focus, and elegant movements. Strong, beautiful, powerful. If you notice images of lions or lionesses, this signals that Ariel is with you. Call upon her to boost, you, boost your confidence and courage. All right, well, that's interesting. We started with the angel cards this time. Might as well go one more deck and see what's cooking with that one. Then we'll go to the traditional tarot cards that I always use. Okay, right, Luna? Why are we pulling angel cards right now first? That's unusual for us, right? I know. People think I have a baby because my cat is so verbal. <laughs> okay, I don't have a baby. <laughs> but she feels like a baby. She's my baby. She's 17, but she still is my baby. Right, Luna? Okay, cut the deck. And... Think about it. Okay. Let's talk about that. Think about it. Think about what's going on. Think about what's happened recently. Think about what I talked about. Think about your life and how it relates. Let's go to think about it. This card asks you to step back from your current path or thought process and review the situation you're asking about. Did you have a question? Did you think about the question? Okay, if you had a question in mind, the card asks you to step back from your current path or thought process and review the situation you're asking about. There's an unseen aspect and the angels guide you to slow down so you can move forward with the whole picture in sight. This card can also be cautionary if you were about to make a radical change impulsively while it may still be the best path, this card asks you to look into the alternatives first. As an indigo, which you are, if you're watching or listening to this, indigos are any age, anyone who is incarnated at this time, who is into a spiritual path and evolving consciously and feels that they are here to be of service to humanity is an indigo. If you're watching this, you're one. You wouldn't be watching it if you weren't. As an indigo, you're exquisitely sensitive to energy. Exactly like what I was talking about at the beginning, right? Watch your energy, stay away from people who aren't safe. And your mission is to heal and transform negative energy into positive. However, there's always a better way to do so. This card asks you to research your options for making the healthful changes that are part of your mission. There's always a better way to do so. The card asks you to research your options for making the helpful changes that are part of your indigo mission. You know, if there's a situation like the one I just mentioned, 
don't make a snap decision. Just ponder it for a while, be aware of it, and be like an elephant. Elephants have great memory. And if you're betrayed, or someone has betrayed your trust or harmed you, or you know, taken advantage of your vulnerability and come out of left field and attacked you by projecting onto you what is actually a quality of themselves they don't like or want, just remember that. And you can still be kind, you can still be friendly, you can still be professional, you can still be warm, you can still be polite. Just remember that and don't go deep with that person. Just keep it more surface. They'll probably never know the difference. So you don't have to discuss it with them. I actually think discussing it with those people uh, who are that way, who are not as evolved as you are, is not a good idea. It'll just take you down a bad path and get you more attacked because they're not able to see it the way you see it. They can't see it at the level that you're at. So if you have the perception to see it in a certain way, it seems like a more benevolent, all-inclusive way, a more higher elevation, more conscious way, then you're seeing where they're at, but they can't see where you're at. So it's futile at a new point to try and educate them or break it down. They're at the level they are. Everyone's at the level they are. We're all doing the best we can. All of us are doing the best we can at all times. Even if we screw up, we're doing the best we can. And we're learning from our lessons when we screw up. Everybody screws up, no matter what level you're at. It's all about learning from your lessons, you know? All right, now we're going into the trusty tarot. Let's see how this pans out compared to the angel cards. This should be interesting because it never really happens in reverse like this. Usually we start with these, um, these cards, the tarot, and um, go the other way. But we started with angels today for some reason, don't know why. I said we have more angelic presence around us today. The angels were speaking first. All right, now we're gonna go in here, cut the cards, and the card on top is this one, the sun. Now this is a major arcana card. It's a 19, the 19. I'm gonna choose one more from this deck. The next one right here is, oh, this came up last time too. Or maybe it came up in a private reading I did recently. I don't know if it was last time I did the class or uh, the video. I think this might have come up in a private reading the other day. Okay, these are two major arcana cards. One is six, the lovers, and one is 19, the sun. All right, we're gonna get into these now. And I'm gonna tell you what they have to say, okay? The sun, okay, well, it's certainly warm out today, that's for sure. See the sunflowers? See the red scarf? See the child nude on a white horse? Okay, the red has to do with the root chakra and being grounded. The child with the sunflower halo on has to do with having the openness and the innocence and the enthusiasm and joy that a child has just from playing outside in the sun. The white horse has to do with riding on higher consciousness and purity, white light, okay? And the bricks behind mean you are supported by a solid foundation, okay? The red scarf is the root chakra. The wall is the solid foundation of the root chakra. And the sunflowers, there are four of them. That stands for yod heh vah -Hey, fire, water, air, and earth, which is also the name of God, yod heh vah -Hey, God consciousness. Shining down, keep yourself open, no pretense. You see that innocence, that child is nude, no clothes. So no pretense, no falseness, just be real, just be authentic. Keep your arms open, wide open, ready to receive, and ride on higher consciousness, and all is well, the sun. Okay, then the next one is the lovers. Some more people without clothes on, okay? <laughs> this is more people telling you in your relationships, be authentic, be real, don't put on a false veneer, don't lie. 
Just be who you are. Let who you are be enough. Again, you've got the red mountain, the red wings of the angel, the purple scarf coming from a higher place. And if you look at the angel's crown, it's flames, it's sun, okay? And you just want to be authentic with no false veneer. Love is the nature of the universe, okay? Love, all right? Everything else is an illusion, all the negativity. Keep coming from love. Love yourself in a healthy, non-egocentric way. Love others and see in everyone God consciousness. Everyone you interact with, see God in them and let them see God in you. Be your best self, be your best self. No pretense, okay? Uh, behind him, you see the fire yodes of light. Behind her, you see the serpent, which is a symbol of eternity and the fruitfulness, the benefits and the fruits that come from just being real, just being who you are and knowing that you are divinely protected and coming from the highest, see, the highest right there. They're, they're putting their arms out, see the highest, come from the highest. And uh, the angel is coming out of the ethers here with the arms wide, see the arms wide, see the arms wide. Be willing to embrace new opportunities. Be willing to embrace a change in direction. Be your own higher self counselor. Have the courage to move forward in the guidance that you're given. Think about things before you move too swiftly or jump to conclusions or open your mouth and snap at somebody or criticize someone or be judgmental Think about it first. Remember to come with your arms open to receive the light, to come from a pure place, and to still have the joy of a child. And in your relationships, no false veneers, no lies, no pretense, no nothing. Just be authentic, be real, be who you are. Well, that's interesting. It all came together and it all made sense. Let's get into a meditation right now. Okay, and let's start doing this. This portion, if you listen to the cards first and you listen to the talk first, you'll start going into a deeper level of being. And then when it's time for the guided meditation part, you'll go bam, deep. So that's why I recommend listening for the cards and what the message is for the cards and from the cards. Because every time you watch or listen, the cards will have a different meaning to you depending upon what is going on in your life. You will see what I mean when you do it that way, when you listen more than once, you'll see. I get notes all the time about that, that people say, oh my gosh, I didn't hear that the first time, and it made so much sense when I listened a week later, or a few days later, or the next morning, whatever it is. Because your brain is only ready to hear something when it's ready to hear something. Until then, it's just blah, 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 blah. It just goes in and out. But when you're ready, it sticks and you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. All right. So now we're going to start the guided meditation. Make yourself comfortable. My voice will start to change. I suggest you lie down and have your back be straight. If you want to use an eye mask, that's fine. Make sure you won't be disturbed. And ideally, you can listen with earbuds, ear pods, or you can prop your phone up next to your pillow if you're lying in bed and just leave the volume on so you can hear it. It's close enough to you that you can hear it. Begin now to notice your breathing. Any sounds that you hear that you recognize as everyday normal sounds don't disturb you in any way. Instead, they allow you to go deeper into your own inner sanctum. This is a time for you to relax and let go.
this is a time for you to nourish your soul, dump the junk, and let go of any extraneous information, energy, or frequency that is unnecessary and that may be keeping you from your higher elevated frequencies. As you begin to notice your breathing, you see that it begins to change. See if you can make yourself just a little more comfortable. Shift in a position. Squunch around and make your body comfortable. Make sure your back is relaxed. That's it. The more relaxed you are, the more beneficial this time will be for you. And each sound of my voice allows you to relax even more. Each breath that you take allows you to relax even more than the breath before. As you easily and gently drift into a natural, relaxed, daydreamy state, where your mind becomes more open and receptive like the arms of a child. Open and receptive to words, statements, frequencies, and vibrations that are helpful, supportive, nourishing, and elevating for you. I'm going to count from five down to zero, and each count will allow you to go even deeper into your own personal sanctum, into your own personal experience. Beginning on the count of five, feeling more and more <clears throat> comfortable with each and every breath. Knowing that you may need to clear your throat, yawn, cough, anything like that, which is a releasing of energetic frequency of the day or the evening, depending upon when you are listening. Moving down to four. You may also have a tendency to swallow, to want to swallow. That's fine. You may also feel fluttering behind your eyelids. That's fine. All of this is just your body beginning to go into a deeper, more comfortable, relaxed, and receptive state. And going down now, <coughs> knowing that any sounds you hear that are everyday normal sounds do not disturb you. They take you even deeper. as you go down to three. Easily and gently, going even deeper and feeling more and more comfortable. That's it. And going down to two. Letting go, drifting and floating. Relaxing even more. Thankful for this time that you have allowed yourself to have. And going down to one. 
the body relaxing more and more, feeling more and more comfortable as you move into a daydreamy state, an altered state of receptivity where only positive energy can enter in. For you are divinely protected and surrounded by beautiful healing white light. You are surrounded and protected by God conscious energy and the emissaries of light, the archangels. All of these benevolent energies want only the best for you. They only want you to get out of your own way so that the blessings can come more rapidly and be more obvious to you. Drifting even deeper now and going from one down to zero where you go even deeper and let go even more. Because it feels so good to let go. It feels so good to be here now, not having to go anywhere, do anything, be anything knowing that you may be having thoughts, but you let them pass by like fluffy white clouds in the sky as you go deeper. Letting go even more as your frequencies begin to align more and more and resonate more and more with the higher consciousness frequencies. For you are open now to a change in direction. This could mean a change in perception. This could mean a change in relationships or career. This could mean a change in the way you interact in certain situations and with certain people. A change in direction always comes after a change in perception. An idea, a thought, leads to a change in direction. Know that if you feel this happening, it is divine intervention and a message to follow. Keep your eyes and ears open for the messages, the symbols. People gravitate to you because you are a natural born counselor, coach, and advisor. This is why it's so important for you to keep your own energy clean. This is why it's so important to you to keep your frequencies clear. This is why it's so important for you to protect your boundaries and the people that you are around knowing that you must avoid unsafe, emotionally unsafe, emotionally, energetically damaging people and situations. 
trust your guidance on this. Have the courage to move forward in the direction you are being guided in. It may not make sense to you now. Just trust and allow, allow, allow. Rather than moving hastily, think things through. You may end up doing the thing you initially thought, but think it through on all levels and from all perspectives before you act, speak, or move forward. Be open with the enthusiasm and innocence of a child, yet protect your energy. Always come from the purest place. Always come from grounded perception. And the way you stay grounded is by clearing the debris from your brain by doing things like this right now, energetically cleansing yourself by the very process we are doing right now, which you can do any time you choose, even repeating the same video. You will hear it differently each time. Come from a loving place. Be authentic, be real with no pretense. Know that everyone is doing the best they can for where they are. And you cannot give insight to someone. They have to see it themselves. You can be supportive. You can be kind. You can be warm. You can be loving. But we can't do the emotional, spiritual work for others. It's their job, their responsibility. Each does their own work when they're ready. And you cannot make someone else be ready. It just doesn't work that way. sounds you hear take you deeper and allow you to have resonance with every cell in your body realigning remodeling and aligning with its true divine rhythm and frequency
I honor you for taking this time for yourself to give yourself this gift of realigning, releasing, revitalizing, regenerating, and renewing. This is a precious gift you give yourself. It's important that you do give yourself this gift of quiet time in this way. I look forward to spending time with you again in this dimension. I send you many, many blessings. Namaste.